On this episode of Resi Week, RC Homes is pre-installing Elon, Office Depot is going to install your next smart home, and there's a new Z-Wave platform. All this and more on this episode of Resi Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is Resi Week, episode 150, Operationally Secure. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Atlas IED, innovative audio solutions for every business environment. And by Daylight, the leading producer of high quality projection screens worldwide. Welcome to Resi Week. This is your weekly wrap up of all the latest news and stories for the residential AV industry. I'm your host, Matt D. Scott for AVNation.TV. And today I'm pleased to be joined by Jason Knott. He is an editor with CE Pro. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Then we have Joe Piccarelli. He is the CEO of a Rosewater Energy and probably the only one on this call wearing shorts today. Ah, uh, and proud of it, I must say. <laughs> if you don't know, Joe's based out of Florida, so it's it's warm down there, opposed to where Jason and I are, are at in the frozen tundra. And we have David Fragioni, uh, which I totally butchered that. I apologize. I'll get a better David other. Frangioni. But there we go. Good to be <laughs> here. Just we just talked about this. I'm sorry. Uh, David is the founder of Audio One. How are you, sir? Doing great. Thank you. Also down here in South Florida. Are you wearing shorts though? No. See? <laughs> as long as you're enjoying South Florida. All right, gentlemen, let's kick this off with a story that comes to us from Residential Tech. Today, RC Homes are pre-wiring smart home automation in 27 homes. Uh, a California builder uh, out in Irvine, California area uh, is building a couple, three, three Los Angeles communities and they are installing a standard Elon package in each home uh, through a new Elon new home program. Uh, Joe, I'm going to start with you on this one. When we start looking at this, this is starting to finally become a trend where home builders are, you know, baby steps, starting to get on board, starting to jump into, you know, new home, true technology packages. If you're, you know, looking at this, how do you go about getting support from manufacturers to make sure that you can create, you know, these, these decent quality packages that not only attract uh, the end users, the homeowners or the potential homeowners, but more importantly, attract the builders? It's, an, it's a great question you ask. And, you know, the first thing when I read the article, when you sent the notes last week, I read the article and I'm going, God, we have been talking about the automated home. Jason, when do you think the first article was? 1994 or 95, somewhere in there? Yeah, easily. You know, so plus 20 years. And now we have builders finally buying in, which is great. And I was both encouraged by it and then it scared the daylights out of me. Because one of the things that could happen if we are not working with the vendors to make sure that the things we put in those houses are bulletproof, we have a chance of really souring the next level of consumer who's buying into this rather than the ultra high end buyer. You know, the guy who's buying an upscale home with these, those, every integrator who gets involved with a builder, these systems, you've got to work with your vendors to make sure they are bulletproof and easy to use because builders hate pain and customers really hate pain. So that was my kind of caution. And that's where, as an, if, if I were integrating with this builder, I would want my vendor to assure, you know, really work with the package to make sure they're fully tested and usable. That was my take. Very good. Matt, you know, my, what I like about this is well, the simplicity of the packages. Mm -hmm. I mean, it forever there was these lengthy uh laundry list of options that uh not just builders i can remember a builder telling me how he had balconies on his uh option list for like 10 years and he hadn't built a second story home in like 10 years so but uh the integrators did the same darn thing we had so many options that we were going to provide people we made this lengthy intimidating process and the one thing i like about this is if you look at the article, very simple, 
packages with not a lot in them, to be honest with you. Well, it's simplicity, right? It, it, it's the standard thing that the average consumer who wouldn't initially maybe talk to someone in our industry is actually looking for, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's an excellent point, Jason. Excellent point. Very good. Easy to choose, easy to use, and that's what you want. David, to, well, to kind sure. of pull well, that string. It can, it can go, you know, it can go either way as with all things integrated AV, right? I mean, you have uh, a, a faction of the clients out there that when you sit with them, uh, the first thing they do is tell you all the things that they hate about integrated AV because they had a bad experience. And then you have a faction of clients that can't imagine living in a home without all of the amenities that an integrated AV system will bring. So the more mainstream and awareness that the systems become, as long as they're done right um, and they are solid, then it's definitely a more is more for the industry because that's one of the things you know, we talked about how it's been since the early 90s when there's been a lot of, uh, uh, you know, just promises of, uh, you know, there's th that builders are on board and developers are on board and we're going to start seeing all these proliferations of AV systems becoming packaged and, and offered. Um, and even as recently as the last year or two, Lennar said that they're going to do all these amazing things with smart home systems. And they make for great headlines and press, but there's so much that goes into getting it right and making sure that as soon as it's not just do it yourself and you're stepping up into actual integrated systems, uh, you know, that really, if it's done right and the, uh, the builder has qualified people specifying it and installing it, supporting it, then it's going to be a situation where a lot of consumers are going to experience it and find that uh, they really like it. So David, let me ask you this. How do you go about creating those effective packages? Is it, is it pulling the builder to look at their, you know, purchaser demographic? Is it trying to, you know, get in front of the, the end users yourself? How do you go about building those? Well, it's, the first step is, uh, I'll take an actual example because at Audio One we have, um, contracts with entire buildings, right? So it's the equivalent because every unit is a single family residence, essentially it's the equivalent of a standalone home in, in the essence of what we're discussing in terms of packages for someone's home. And what we did is we work in, in the contracts we have with these different buildings, the buildings price points vary quite a bit. So there are people spending half a million dollars to buy a, a nice size condo and there are people spending four million dollars to buy the same size condo at a different building because one's on the water one isn't etc cetera, etc cetera. so you've got this whole range of buyers and it, it each building um, looking at the residences and the offerings that are there we sit down with a designated person on behalf of the developer and we talk about what the price points are of the units and what the different needs make the most sense for the uh, prospective consumer. And we put together very, very simple packages and then we offer upgrade solutions that we can take people through. And what you find is that the vast majority of people are kind of yes or no on whether they want it and whether they, they are interested in the packages and spending the money for what they'll get. And then there's a group of people that are really into AV. They've already had it at their home. They're sounder video aficionados and taking them through the upgrade process is very seamless because they, they need guidance, but they don't need a lot of ideas. They've already been there and they're really, they're kind of telling us, Hey, I, you know, we had a customer the other day say, you know, I want Atmos in my living room. And there would have been five other people we met with in the same building who went for packages and they wouldn't even know what Atmos was. So right. it really just depends uh, on the consumer. But to answer your question very straightforwardly, you've got you've to work with the person in charge of building the homes, uh, whether it's a builder or a developer, and really make sure that you're aligned on what makes the most sense for that particular price point of consumer and, and pick the best of their needs. And that's why you really need the expertise um, because – there's, there's really, if we're not careful in our industry, there's a very blurry line that the big guys in tech would love to see continue to be blurry between do-it-yourself and integrator. 
And as soon as integrator falls anywhere close to do it yourself, um, you know, we're in trouble as an industry because there's so much that goes into being a qualified integrator and what's needed out of an integrator on any project that it really has very little to do with do it yourself. I have, I have a question to ask because one of the things that uh, pieces of information I wanted out of that article that I didn't get is what were the price points of those homes? And in particular for David or anybody else on this pro podcast, is there a ratio? If you have a $500,000 home, is the ideal price point 20,000, 50,000? Is there, is there any consistency? Um, I was curious, I would have loved to know what the average price of each of those homes were and what the price point of the entry level of each package was. I have seen that there is consistency with price points. So under a half million, uh, oh, between 500,000 and a million and over a million. And I think that just as broad strokes, you're, you're anywhere from 15 to 50,000 and a half million and a little north of that. And then it goes up from there as you get closer to a million. Um, and again, it's all based on scope and it's based on whether it's a condo or whether it's a standalone home. Cause obviously, you know, if you're doing things like irrigation and, and garage doors, there's nothing like that in the condo world. Uh, but in the, in the condo, in the standalone home world, um, you know, you tend to have um, more cameras than you would in a condo. And, you know, it just, it just varies how the money is spent. And that's why it's so important to, um, to really make sure that you're aligned with um, each project and as to what is needed, because we're in an industry that's so vast and you can have so many different price points and offerings and it can get so confusing so fast that you really have to focus in on exactly what's going to work for the end user. Very good. All right, gentlemen, let's move on to our next story of the day. This comes to us from CE Pro and the one and only Jason Not. Do you know which one I'm talking about, Jason? <laughs> Office Depot, if you have not heard, has launched a smart home installation service. Uh, essentially, they're going to be offering and installing uh, Google and Nest products and uh, some other smart home devices out of their 1,400 retail locations uh, and their website. Uh, they are now a Nest Service Pro uh, provider and as such are working through this. Jason, I want to start with you on this. One, um, we've I feel like we've seen this before. I feel like every kind of company that sells any sort of smart device has tried to get into the game of smart home installations and subsequently failed. Is this not like, I just don't understand how Office Depot thinks that they're going to succeed in this when literally no one else in the, the field other than Best Buy has managed to do this. Yeah, yeah. this my kind of takeaway here is you're right. A lot of those companies have tried. Um, and a lot of them might have been trying too early. Let's just say that the market has progressed. And, and one of the things, if I can kind of put this in a big picture scope, um, you know, we just finished the CE Pro State of the Industry that's going to be in our January issue. And what we're, what I'm clearly seeing is that the independent integrator is clearly migrating to uh, fewer jobs at a higher end price point. Mm -hmm. And um, it's now, this is now the second year in a row we've seen the typical integrator median do fewer jobs than they did the year before at a much higher price point. This year it was a 17% higher price point. So the, one, it has to do with the lack of qualified labor and all the other issues that go into it. They can't find people. But what I think is happening and, uh, is that I believe the market, there's going to be a clear demarcation between um, the higher end and this entry level part of the market is going to be left to other entities, whether that be Best Buy, whether that be Office Depot, whether that be Amazon refer referral service, whatever it is. Um, I think that's kind of the bigger picture of where the smart home market is heading, that the independents are, uh, and again, I'm not saying that some independents aren't going to try and compete in the volume world. They might. We see it in their security business that some of the independents 
you know, try and compete with ADT and others. But I see that there's going to be a, a, I believe there's going to be a clear mar demarcation between uh, the independent guys doing higher end, fewer jobs um, that require the real custom installation, professional installation, and this entry level is going to be left to other entities like that. Now, having said that, I applaud Google and Nest for bringing companies, whether these guys are being brought in kicking and screaming, I don't know, but there were companies at Cedia Expo that were only exhibiting at that show because they were part of the Works with Nest uh, mm -hmm. program that Google had put together. So it's, it's elevating the, the exposure for the market, bringing more brands into the market, but I do think that this is a kind of a, a broad snapshot of a higher end versus lower end happening in the space. Very good. David, I want to come to you on this. Um, this is, you know, not really kind of your bread and butter, I'm, I'm assuming, doing, doing Nest cameras and, and things such as that. No. But what I want to ask you is we've been, dare I say, sold the, the, the story for years that the smart home products will generate this, this customer flow that will gravitate upwards. Obviously, not everyone but a large number will start here and grow and they'll get to that point where they're ready for audio one and they're looking for that type of thing. When you see these kinds of stories, when you see, you know, Best Buy trucks all over the place, is that something where you look at it and go, Ooh, that client is a mine today, but they might be mine in five years. Or have we given up on that, that dream? Well, um, I, I never give up on any dream, right? But, <laughs> but, uh, but, the, but the reality that I've experienced um, over now close to 30 years is that, um, no, I, it generally the, you know, I've seen Comcast go through it and ADT and AT&T um, and a myriad of other huge corporations that it's really do-it-yourself technology done by somebody at a low cost um, in your house. It's really just kind of like advanced do it yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of having your neighbor do it or, or your family member do it, there's a guy that's supposed to be trained and understand it and install it. Um, and, you know, and, and so I look, I think any solution that helps somebody at any price point, if it works and it delivers the value they expect, then I applaud it. At, as far as my business and and how it affects our industry i think that um you know it's it's not really it hasn't proven up until now to be a good thing it hasn't done anything to help us um and in fact i've seen it um i've seen it hurt in some ways where um you'll have a high end client and it will um it will actually just kind of distort their, their view of what smart home is. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I have something to add here. I, I think the, the idea that the low end drives the high end is backwards. The high end has always been there and what is in the high end is what creates the mass market. Mm -hmm. Remember every product, particularly in our industry starts as a high end product. It wasn't that long ago. In, 2000, we were selling 42 inch flat panel TVs with really bad pictures for about $15,000. You know, the high end began there. It is the high end that generates the market. And then the hope is that as the low end becomes fulfilled or the low middle becomes larger, the high end will grow with it. But it is because of the innovator and early adopter, the guys who spend the money, the guy that you know, David spent his last 30 years catering to and creating markets for, that creates the low end. And if that ecosystem, if they drive the high end out of business, the entire ecosystem of the market fails. It disappears. And that's what vendors don't get sometimes, is keeping the high end guys in business is critical to the business. Yes, yeah, I'll disagree. So, in, in general. All right, gentlemen, let's move on to our last, most likely last story of the day. This also comes to us from Residential Tech Today. New Z-Wave smart home platform is driving the new battery, or not the new battery IoT trend, but that, that massive device trend. If you are unaware, uh, when Silicon Labs purchased Z-Wave uh, about a year or so ago, this was something that, you know, we were all kind of 
expecting and looking forward to seeing. And in this case, it is the new uh, Z-Wave 700 on the wireless Gecko platform. Very, very quickly, um, it's going to allow a new class of smaller, more intelligent products at a lower cost and faster to market, which is all things that we love. David, I'm going to start with you on this one. When we look at Z-Wave, it, it, it has been that technology that has, if I can say, outlasted or, or grown maybe more effectively than some of the others because of its security and its inter interoperability between uh, it, its devices. You know, it's, it's not something where you can just buy the chip, throw it in and hope it works and say, yay. It, it's actually, it's got to be tested. It's got a lot of security built into it. With this explosion of IoT devices, how does having a, uh, obviously a new faster and, and, you know, better battery life and all that jazz, how does having this better chip um, create a, a better performance across the board, knowing that they can bring these products out to market faster using the rock solid Z-Wave platform? It's great. I mean, the, the fact is that the number one, um, you know, factor in, in the, on the product side of things uh, is the reliability the, and the speed and the interoperability among all the different products to work together and to stay online, especially in our nearly all wireless world, and, and clearly what Z-Wave is. Um, that's, it's a huge step forward. Um, you know, the, the fact is there's always, every year or every certain interval, there's always major advancements. The, the, we're seeing this exponentially right now, right? Every year it just gets what used to take three years to, to cycle around and improve. is now getting down to, in some cases, three months. So, you know, the, the more that our industry is seeing technology such as Z-Wave progress at a faster rate with more robust and secure uh, performance is a great thing. Very good. Joe, this is one of those things that, you know, security has always been really one of the foundational parts of Z-Wave. Having, again, you know, faster pieces, but maintaining security probably at the, the, the onset wasn't the priority, right? How has the, the security aspect made it easier to comfortably say, hey, we're going to put a Z-Wave device into your home, knowing that it's a secure device? Well, I, the entire issue of security, and, and you're correct, it, five years ago, six years ago, people weren't really talking about the security of the device. And it is certainly not only operational security, but privacy informational security has become more and more important. And, and certainly in the area of the market that Rosewater plays in, you know, our device is all about making sure all systems are secure. And I see that trend growing more and more rapidly. Uh, we want operational security, we want informational security. One of the drawbacks to many of the systems I see put in are, is the fact that they are not operationally secure. They are easy to trip up. There are way too many things to have to reboot all the time. So I, I see this as, as a great step towards making clients a lot more comfortable both in the short term and long term with our products. Very good. Jason, I'll give you the, the, the last word on this. Um, we within the industry, we, we know Z-Wave's strong. We know Z-Wave's fast. Uh, we're going to expect that seven, you know, Z-Wave 700 is going to be faster and better and greater and all these great things. How do you, or do you have to, tell that story to your customers at all? Or is it something that you tell your story and just put the products in with it? Can you yeah, leverage I, both? I don't think the customer cares uh, between uh, Z-Wave, Zigbee, or anything. They don't, they don't really care. They just want it to work. You know, I think, um, I think it was Amazon that actually said that they had done research that showed that people automatically assumed that Z-Wave and Zigbee uh, communicated with each other because they both started with the letter Z. So, or Z. Or Z. Yeah. So, um, but I think this goes hand in hand with what we were talking about before in that this just shows uh, even more of this, I think, lower end IoT level device 
play is going to come to market. Now we're seeing, you know, a, a, a chipset specifically designed for this. Um, that it's going to feed that entry level part of the market. Um, so it's a it's you know a good thing for the broad awareness of the smart home market. Even though, as I said before, I, I see the independent guy rising to the high end of the of the market over the long term in this area. Very good. And I agree with you, Jason. That's I'm fine. We find the same thing. Um, that clients are. Uh, it's all about what they're going to get as a team and what experience that team brings and what expertise that team brings to their project. And there's a great deal of trust within that team, not only for the individual's performance, but on what products that they're going to advise or in a lot of cases use that the client isn't even aware of, you know, they're off, they oftentimes don't know what kind of matrix switcher has been chosen. They just know if it shows a picture every time they select whatever they want to watch on that TV. Yeah, very good. All right, gentlemen, let's leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Joe, if people want to connect with you, learn more about Rosewater Energy, where can they do that? Well, just an email at Joe Pick at rosewaterenergy.com or go to our website, rosewaterenergy.com. Excellent. Thank you so much. Jason, my good friend, thanks again for being here uh, and, and getting us such good content there. Uh, if people want to connect with you, learn more about CE Pro, where can they do that? Obviously, they can go to cepro.com or they can follow me on Twitter, Jason W. Knott. Excellent. Thanks so much. David, thanks so much for joining us and bringing your expertise. If people want to connect with you, learn more about Audio One, where can they do that? Um, Audio-one.com. So it's audio-one. Audio um, David at audio-one.com is my email and David J. Frangioni.com. So all those places will get you to audio one and, and get us in contact. And thank okay. you for having me on. It's great to, uh, to be a part of this. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for myself, if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Twitter at Matt D. Scott and pretty much every other social platform. But more importantly, please stop by avnation.tv where you'll find this show as well as a wide variety of our other shows with all the verticals that we cover when you visit the website, please take a moment to check out our supporters. We are extremely thankful for their support and ask that you support them as well. Thanks again for watching. That's all the time we have for this episode of Resi Week.